Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this artwork of Bay from Hollow Life. So, this one was definitely a whole lot of fun because I got to make almost a wallpaper looking uh, artwork. And it was definitely a whole lot of fun. Now, I would like to say I have an interesting topic to discuss this time. Um, I had a comment suggest that I talk about the opportunities and things you can expect as an artist trying to make a living. And that is a fun idea, but I would also like to quickly point out that even though I do a lot of art for work and as a job, I'm also not a full-time artist. I'm actually a phlebotomist by trade. I, I'm a professional vampire, I take blood for a living. But as an artist, and especially one that's gotten to almost 30,000 followers on Twitter, over time you start to make connections with other artists, you start meeting people, some of the people that you draw, maybe they follow you. And if there's one thing I've noticed is I, I do kind of voice acting stuff for fun, but over time I started to make connections with other prominent artists, uh, and other people in the Hollow Live community, and some Hollow Live members even like interact with my posts and kind of boost me. Um, so that's kind of what what you're looking for is you just want to focus on getting your craft better and better, and then picking a niche or a pocket of the internet that you personally really enjoy. Don't just pick up a a random fan base because. It, it gets a lot of attention because at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying your art, you won't improve, you won't be having fun, and it's going to be terrible for you. I, for example, if, if you've been following um, me as an artist for over 10 years, you'll know that there was a time I was actually a brony. And even though I met a lot of cool people back then and really got my connections within that fan base, I was not actually very happy in that fan base. And it wasn't to say that I wasn't getting success. Like my best artwork on on DeviantArt at the time got half a million views and likes. It was it was absolutely insane. Um and I was consistently pulling like great views and great resources. The issue was it did not translate into a following. I was not having fun. And when the fan base started to turn a bit, when the more bad things that started to come into the fandom, I was just like, all right, I'm done. And I almost abandoned art entirely because it soured my mood so much. Um, in fact, for almost three whole years, I stopped drawing. And then after those three years, I decided I really miss art. I'm going to go back to doing it. And I started, I started drawing again by drawing a character for my friend Nack. And she really liked it. And I thought, man, this is, this is what I miss doing. I missed making art for people. So I went and I started drawing again. I did some uh, Azure Lane artwork because I was playing that mobile game at the time. And then over time, it started to develop into Arknights. But funny enough, at the time when I started the Azure Lane artwork, I only had like, what, maybe at most 40 followers on Twitter after being on Twitter for almost like five years. So what I did was I, I did um, art raffles, which, and I actually don't recommend doing art raffles. Even though they got me my first 300 followers, most people didn't stick around. They came for the giveaway and not for the art. So that was definitely an issue. But out of those 300, you can get, you can basically guesstimate that about 10% will stay. Meaning 30 people were at least interacting with my artwork by that point. And that slowly started to build momentum for myself. So I then switched to Arknights because I really enjoyed Arknights. And, um,. Arknights ended up being very successful for me. And then, then came the big one. VTubers started becoming a huge thing. Now, I was already watching VTubers before the VTuber boom. I was watching in Japanese um, 3D models and like basically idol corporations that were doing the VTuber scene. And when Hololive EN came out, I was, 
I was hooked. By that point, I wanted to draw the characters that I loved so much. And it was the first time I had been part of a fan base where I was truly happy with what I was drawing. And then it was just a matter of getting better and keeping at it over and over and over and over again until I actually got pretty good. And what ended up happening while getting better was people started reaching out to me saying, hey, I've got this project that I'm working on. Would you mind being the artist for it? And I did it. And then slowly over time, I met uh, a voice actor named Jacob Wilson, who he's a, he's a really good friend of mine. Um, and he wanted a commission. And funny enough, um, at the time, I was, I was a lot more politically conservative. And that wasn't because it was like what I believed in. I think it was more of how I was raised. So I assumed because I was raised in a Christian conservative household that I must be conservative. Well, the more I would, I would see Jacob in my timeline and I remember I would argue with him about like things politically. And, but through all of that, even though we had disagreements, um, it, we still got along. So he asked for an artwork from me. And that led to a friendship. And then through that friendship, a, a bunch of voice actors started contacting me. I was able to discover who I was as a person. And over time, all these, all these great uh, voice actors and directors were all contacting me and saying, hey, I love your work. Would you be willing to do this for me? So I did. And then over time, like larger VTubers that weren't in the Hollow Live scene would follow me and say like, hey, I like your artwork. Can you do this for me? So it's, it really is just a matter of constantly getting better and over time, things start to snowball. Um, a good thing I would also like to point out is that success should be slow and gradual. Instant success, it's impossible to maintain. Um, nothing should be scarier to someone who wants to be a content creator than blowing up overnight. Um, my my fan base started off growing like uh, it took like two years for me to get a thousand followers. Then from a thousand followers, it took me two years to get to ten thousand. Now, if you notice, that's a huge like leap. That's that's like ten times what I had. Now it's only taken me one year to get to twenty k, and now at this current point in time, there's still like four months left in uh, 2024. At least, if I'm doing the math correctly, I don't know, September, October, November, December, yes, four. <laughs> um, so there's, and I'm almost at 10K before the year ends, so I'm like, yeah, we're, we're moving now, we're going. And I think my, my favorite thing about my YouTube is I'm actually feeling like I'm doing something right with YouTube. So I've had all this opportunity, all this ability to grow, and I'm super happy with myself because it's the first time I feel like I've, I've put in so much work and it get rewarded and I'm also happy so I I get to be a phlebotomist at my actual job and then I get to be the like quote-unquote micro pseudo celebrity if you can even call it that online but at the end of the day it's just growth and progress is slow and you want it to be slow it might seem like you want the success now, but trust me, you don't. You want to enjoy the ride. Because the slower you grow, the more you pick up and learn things. Things to do, things not to do. And what's funny is the things that you do to grow are different depending on what it is you do. So as an artist in Hololive, my, my goal is to make what my audience wants. Now, the preferred goal of a content creator is that the audience, what the audience wants and what you want need to be the same thing. And if they aren't the same thing, you will start to become unhappy, you will burn out a lot quicker, and you will create problems for yourself. So my recommendation would be draw what you want or do what you want and build a fan base off of that. Sometimes the things you do will not garner a audience. So you have to play around with it. You have to play around with what's fun and what works for you and then test it, A-B. But don't just like test it once and oh, this didn't do anything, so it's not worth it. 
um, some of my old artworks that did horribly in the algorithm on Twitter. For some reason, when I would repost them later, a month later, they just blew up out of nowhere. You cannot count on things like the algorithm to make you successful. You have to push things and be creative and do it yourself. And if it doesn't work, try it again. And who knows, this time it might work. So that is overall what I would recommend. Um, as you grow, you will get bigger, people will approach you, you will make friends that are just as large. But on the topic of friends, please, 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 don't just use people and throw them away. All right. Well, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a bit of a different one, but if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot, and I'll see you next time.